Hello everybody, welcome back to the Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Things are going quite well and quite well indeed. So, we've got our, our pick of the litter here. Uh, you need, you got two more on there, but it doesn't really matter. You need a Satan kill. Well, we recently played as Eden, didn't we? Uh, I dread Maggie. But it's to, sh it's to the cathedral, so we'll take Maggie. Uh, I don't like Maggie, but... Yeah. Well, nothing here. I suppose the Yamhart is more important on hard mode. Than on normal mode, but still. Needing an item such as Yamhart means you're really not doing too well for yourself, is it? so... Consider that, why don't you? So, last episode, I've uh, well, at the end of the last episode, I've directed you to go look at some weird quirks, shall we say, that uh, is human nature. Don't know if you've uh, watched it or planning on watching it or actually have watched it. But, you know, we need something to talk about, so... It's been a while since I've actually seen the documentary myself. It could be like three or four years even. And it's still stuck by me quite a bit, so yeah. If you haven't watched it, it, it could... Yeah, it would, might... Blah, 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 blah. It's a bit of an eye-opener. It's just... Uh, it's the blue one. That's okay. Attack fly can still do some good work for us. If we let it... So the things that were kind of weird for me, like the um, the dude that needed help in the street, so they had a guy who had to lay down and groan a bit out of pain, stuff like that. And they did that in a busy shopping street and a, well, not so busy street. Still with traffic, pedestrians and stuff passing around. Now, where do you think that he got helped first? The busy street with lots and lots of people? Or the not so busy street with just a few passerbys? Now, of course, it wouldn't be a weird quirk if you... If it were the busy street. Uh, it was actually the... Uh, it was indeed the less busy one. Um, apparently it's because people look for... what's the word? Uh, approval from others. Apparently you have a really, really, really strong desire to be part of a group. So, we look around and we see no one's helping, which means they're... Um, take this all in a small, temporarily mind means that there is no group available to help. Which means no one is bothered to help him and just go with mainstream. Ignore the dude. Another thing is, once one soul decides from, come on, we can't let that be, and actually goes help the people, a lot of other people will start rushing in, because there's then some kind of group. Although it's not that big, it's still there, and it then our sense of wanting to help does triumph over that, because we can do it while still being part of said group. That sense of wanting to belong to a group goes actually pretty deep. Um, another great example from that was uh, the Burning Hotel. That's actually a two-parter. Um, apparently one of them doesn't have anything to do with the group, but I'm going to start off with that one. Um, uh, da -da -da, there was a like, was it a hotel that had a restaurant at the bottom floor so people could just go in for a snack and didn't have to rent a room and stuff like that. Um, burned down. Uh, the weird thing is, all the people that were in the hotel got out without any problems. But in the restaurant itself, a lot of people died, even though that was on the bottom floor. No, it wasn't because the doors were blocked. Um, 
The reason behind it is people in the restaurant didn't want to leave because they didn't pay their bill yet. They looked around at other people, didn't s saw any of them willing to dine and dash, so to say. And they just sat there and got suffocated by the smoke. Yeah. The other one I was talking about, um, that one is actually even more bizarre. Um, they got in a bunch of actors, plus one dude that was completely oblivious for it. And they said to the dude, well, there's a few people here and we are going to just fill in a questionnaire. And at the end of things you'll get a small little thing in the jiggy. Uh, I don't want Dead Sea Scrolls. A small little thing in the jiggy. Uh, or it could actually have been for a job, I'm not entirely sure anymore. Like I said, it's been like three years. And uh, yeah, they're in a hotel room or just a lobby room. I'm struggling for words again. Uh, anyway, just a big room. Oh, in a building, like two or three stories up, and uh, the dude that's in charge of the thing for overseeing the questionnaire he suddenly says, "Well, um, I'll be out for like five or ten minutes. Just wait here, and I'll uh, come back to gather up all the sheets and stuff like that." So the dude leaves, and uh, after like two or three minutes, they start. Um, blowing in smoke fr under the door. Um, yeah. So, I mean, knowing what I already said, you kind of know what happens. Dude starts to look around. And they did that with a few people. It's not a single case, and every rule has its exception. Um, yeah, the dude looked around, started seeing the smoke. Um, he got a bit uneasy, obviously. And, uh, at first he didn't do anything, so he just sat there, like... I don't know. Uh, he saw no one else was uh, making any... plans for leaving, so he started talking to them, and like, ah, shouldn't we leave, and uh, hey, there's smoke coming from our door, maybe there's a fire and stuff like that. Even the fire alarm went off, that's correct. Um, and all the other ones, so the actual actors, were kind of nonchalant about it. Like, nah, nah, the dude will be back here, so on and so ever. Uh, they started editing like red lights from our door showing that there was to really make it look like there was a fire the dude still didn't leave it took him like 10-15 minutes to say fuck you guys I'm out of here oh great well but you might as well go with Krampus' uh, header if you get it um, they did the experiment with men, women all of them but practically all of them it took like between 5 to 15 minutes to actually evacuate so that's how hard it is for us to go in against the group as they call it the group sure there were a few there there was one of them I think he saw the smoke he looked around didn't see anyone leave say fudge it I'm out of here he was like out in 2 minutes that's a smart one um, they say well I probably won't be like that eh, I won't be like that problem is you probably will it's hard coded so what else was interesting in there um, how we shove away our own ethics for what we get from someone who may or may not have authority I mean there's a few um, few easy things to be said about that. Uh, could the secret room be too hard up here? No, so which means it's probably damaged. Let's try that first. Um, the one with the electric shocks, so... Um, how was that set up again? Um, yeah, like... Uh, someone came in and uh, was asked to ask some questions to a student. I think that was for a so-called... Uh, learning enhancing drug is what they told him. It wasn't true, obviously. Um, it was just a test. And no one actually got hurt there. Um, so yeah, he had to. Let's see what we have in our pills. Paralysis is bluck. Range down bluck. And are you a wizard? Even more bluck. Um, yeah. So try to get this. Uh, there was a dude that uh, was reading the questions, and in front of him he had a board which which he could 
as he so was told. Ah, oh, shite, this thing is still on. Um, electrocute him, and he was supposed to electrocute him when the student gave a false answer. He couldn't see the student. Uh, there was a screen there, they told him so it was that the student couldn't see him, actually it was the other way around. And uh, yeah, started meeting math questions or stuff like that, and they told him there was a dude in a white suit which then represented the actual point of authority on that scenario to constantly give him worse and worse shocks every time he answered the question wrong. Obviously, the student wasn't really hooked up and was just a great actor. So obviously he was instructed to answer everything wrong, and um, at first it went kind of well. The dude didn't really have problems; were minor shocks that wouldn't even hurt you or me. But eventually the voltage kept creeping on higher and higher, and even though the student wasn't really hooked up on anything, he was doing a great job convincing the poor man that he was. Until the up to the point where he actually started screaming, begging to stop and to stop, while the doctor, as the point of authority, just stepping up, just keep going, raise up the voltage, keep on going. You could see the poor guy had problems dealing with his, well, ethics. He, you could really see it on his face, he didn't want to continue anymore. But, just because the dude in a white coat said continue, he did. Just kept on creeping up the voltage. Man, people are messed up. I mean, there were some more funny things in there. Even if you get like the stupidest requests from people that apparently have authority, we will listen to them. Like, um, just a guy in a police suit walking on the streets. Well, it wasn't a street, it was more like a. Well, for all we care, it is a street. Um, just going up to a random stranger saying, well, Could you stand on one leg for me, please? And they actually did that. Didn't question it why or something. Nope, just went along with it. I mean, there was an overarching story in the entire documentary of uh, was it like 10 or 12 people that they put in the home said they were doing some um, tests about team building or something I don't know anyway um, that's where they did a lot of experiments on as well um, like a thing that was most noticeably um, we're 12 people and somewhere along the line they said, well, okay, uh, we're gonna split you up in two teams. And obviously they didn't choose the teams themselves, they were chosen for them and the actual people performing the experiment, so the dudes behind the scenes, uh, made it so that people who liked each other weren't always in the same group. And the thing you noticed quite quickly was the second they got divided into teams they immediately started acting a little bit more hostile towards people not in their team even though they were decently good friends that just before they put up the well put on the shirt that described on what team they were on Dang, man we are so so messed up I don't know why I enjoy watching stuff like that. Um, just, I don't know. I really don't. But maybe that's my fault. I don't know. Uh, there's our boss room. What are we doing here? Because I'm kind of zoned out from all of this talking of nonsense about the flaws of human nature. Uh, we want a bomb, right? Um. So what else can I remember from that? Um, people that start acting differently, like the most timid person of the group ended up being a total bitch. Um, I mean, of course there was the experiment that they briefly showed with uh, people that were put up as a guard. Uh, I don't know what that is. If I can't find any more money, I'll probably use that to buy a bomb and see if we are done with this floor, I'm probably just gonna do that. I'm 
to get this too. Like, if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, I really don't know how many, how much people we are talking about here. Bob's brain. Well, we're not doing too much damage, so it probably yeah, okay. Uh, I don't even know where we're going with this. Let me have a look at that. Okay, it's uh, cathedral. So yeah, a bunch of people uh, set up in an old prison. Half of them were, well, I would say forced, but given the role as a guard, the other half a role as a prisoner, and they were just supposed to... Well, that was it, actually. The guards had to make sure that the prisoners were alright, and that was basically it. Obviously, um, prisoners didn't enjoy getting their freedom taken away, Blah blah blah. Um, they actually had to cut that short because there were people that were going on hunger strikes, nervous breakdowns, some serious health issues, and it didn't last too long. They spent it somewhere around a week, and it was supposed to last a lot longer than that. But the speed up is good. Better than that. Uh, we don't really have that much going for us here. Um, that'll be it for this thing then. Um, there's actually two movies about that experiment. Um, the actual experiment happened in Germany, I believe. Um, the movie is called Das Experiment, I believe. Um, I don't know if there's actually two, but I do believe so. And if it's true, be sure to watch the German one because face it, American movies have kind of got the tendency to um, well, exaggerate a bit. No offense. No offense. Um, just seeing that it's based on a true story and may probably want to get it as truthfully as possible. Um, what else was there? Um... Well, there wasn't more to it. I think that's most of the important bits. Seeing that that's the only thing I can remember, that's probably... Oh yeah, there's the... Um, I think I saw that on something else. Um, um, I don't even know what I saw them, but like... There was someone that had... Ten items worth a dollar each, and another one that had ten bills of one dollar. Well, could be dollars, could be euros, could be pounds, whatever. And they both sent them out into different streets, all roughly equally crowdy. And their job was to give it away as quick as possible. They were only allowed to give one item or one piece of currency per person. Now what do you think? And once again, it's pretty obvious, seeing that we're filing this one under a quirky again. Guess who got rid of his stuff first? The one with the money or the one with the items? Uh, and I actually believe it were toilet brushes. Indeed, the one with the toilet brushes got rid of his ten first. You know why? Because we don't like to get money without a reason. And it's just money. Uh, we don't have a problem with gifts, obviously, because he, otherwise the dude with the toilet brushes would have gotten it away. But we feel like there's usually strings attached when getting free money. While we don't have that with, or at least not as much, with regular items. They also had a... Um, experiment, and that was on... Mind games, I believe, on Discovery Channel. Um, they set up a booth somewhere in again crowded area. I think somewhere near a shopping mall or something. Um, uh, ooh, blank card. We'll see if you can get that. Um, man, I'm really not paying attention to what the fudge I'm doing here, but I am seeing something decent here. Oh. 
disappointing. Um, yeah, the booth with the money, right? Um, blah 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 blah. What? Uh, yeah, set it up on a busy shopping thing. Uh, just a glass aquarium filled with money. A sign on the front of it that just said "free money." Now I know I already told you a bit about the whole thing. It's our uh, affiliation with getting money for nothing. And they started off by putting a dude right next to the boot. Well, inside of the boot. He was just standing there with, uh, in front of him, a box, glass box, filled with money. And in front of it, a sign said, free money. So a lot of people just came looking. I mean, free money would pique your interest, right? But none of them were actually grabbing anything. They were just dawdling around a little bit, going like, eh, eh, what's up with that? <laughs> um... Just gonna use the hangman here then. Oh, still got a spirit out. Cost us a key as well, but I think that was a good deal. Um, if there were a few that started asking questions like, is it really free? Blah blah blah. Can I just take that? No strings attached? Blah blah. Once they were assured that there was nothing on it, yeah, people started taking a bit of money. And then they removed the dude. And. People were still, oh, what's the right word, a bit cautious, but more money started being taken without actually making any too much question about it. There was even one there that just looked if he could take the whole box with him. <coughs> There's a trooper right there. And he actually ended up taking quite a big amount of that. Anyway, um, yeah, human nature, man. Weird stuff. So there's another thing right there. What's up with that then? Is that a library then? We might want to go with a book then. I'm bad at this. Hmm. I don't know, I just like to watch thing that shows you how flawed you really are as a person. Uh, book of Belial, why not? That's a lot better. We can definitely use that damage. Um see if I can think about some other things things while we're at it. Uh, hmm. Probably is, just it's getting kind of hard to think about it. Uh, catacombs too, so we still got some shops after this. Let's just leave then. What else was there? What else was there? Um, so here's one for you guys to think about. Um, uh, you might have heard of it already, of course, it's the same with everyone. People might have watched the show that I was talking about as well, so they might have heard anything I was just talking about. But, um... You and a close friend of yours got caught for... some form of crime. And you're both being interrogated. Um, you didn't have a chance to speak with each other, that's important to you. And um, at some point I tell you this, look, we've got nothing on you, really. Um, so here's the deal. If you and your friend don't confess, you're free to leave. If you both accuse the other one from doing it you'll both get a um, half of your sentence I don't know how much it is I don't think it matters too much but if one of you denies it while the other one accuses you you'll get three times the jail time waiting for you what would you do? would you rat him out? or would you say we didn't do it? Now, here's the thing, and that's kind of unfortunate. Most people will end up accusing the other one. And that's 
I mean, you could say that it's because of trust issues, not trusting the other one doing the same. And that's basically also partially true. We have trust issues when it comes down to it having consequences to ourselves. Which brings us to another reason, is we always try to do good for ourselves if we have the option to. And being, actually confessing that your partner did it will guarantee you that you won't be stuck with three times the jail time above your head. Worst case scenario, and that depends on how good of a friend it is, you'll be doing one, well, half of your sentence. Best case scenario, again, depending on how good of a friend it is, um, You'll walk free. Now, of course, if it ends up with you walking free, you'll have that guilt. But having that as a possibility will not stop you from still doing it. Can't believe we'll have to go through this enormous room again. <laughs> There's a few more things, and I suppose you could, uh, I'll just change the, the words I used a bit around, and it can actually be used on more daily situations. So, one thing about, um, a big difference between humans and monkeys, if you're into that as well. It turns out one of the few things we actually differ from apes, no matter what kind of ape you pick, doesn't matter. Even the most, in quotes, advanced one hasn't got that. Is um, we can do stuff for other people without directly benefiting from it ourselves. Um, and that's something that's can really show in little kids. They will often do someone for someone without, whilst actually knowing that they won't be getting anything for it in return. It's something we tend to lose quite quickly. I mean, a lot of people eventually go out of, you give a little, you get a little. But uh, yeah, that's one of the main differences we have with primates. Go figure. Alright, what do we get here? I'll take that. We're still not really doing too much, even our damage is still freaking horrible. Is there something wrong with this run? Just picked up the pack and it doesn't look like we're shooting that much quicker. <sighs> what are we doing here? Uh, we are actually good to go, but seeing that we're not going to boss rush, we might as well explore a bit more. Yeah, yeah. Humans. One of the few species that kills just for the kill. Monkeys, again, being one of the other ones. And I think dolphins as well. Yeah, weird, huh? Dolphins being dicks. Uh, so that's our donation machine blown up, which means we might as well pick this one, right? This is now more. Um... So I'm trying to find the secret rooms here then, but I already found it. Uh, what am I doing here then? Yeah, we got Bob's thoughts, we got that as a surprise kind of deal. Um, for health we're doing okay, 
nothing exceptionally out of the ordinary there. Somehow I feel we should have been doing more damage already, but we're not. I don't know where the horns come from, maybe I picked up ramming speed somewhere. I really haven't been paying attention to this run, haven't I? That's the great thing that you can just zone out on in some games. Anywho. There's lots and lots of experiments being done every day and... That's actually great, we keep learning more and more new stuff. Not just about ourselves, but others. Other things as well, like space and animals and all that jazz. Um, that's a great thing, it's like impossible that there will ever be a time where we know everything. Because, and that's said before, you figure out one thing and it immediately raises a bunch of other questions. We found a secret room, right? Uh, we can blow ourselves into our self-sacrifice. Uh, no, the curse room. We'll do that. Uh, paralysis. Yeah, I don't want that. a blood bank to be completely honest. Is there still something here? No, there's not. Um, what else is there? What else is there? We're not even halfway through this run yet and I'm already out of things to talk about. Um, well, there's the whole thing about how easy we can be tricked. So a thing where they uh, made a guy believe that he actually went on a balloon ride a long, long time ago. I think that'll would have done much. No, it did not. Um, yeah. Which brings me to another thing. Do any of you? Truly believe in hypnosis. Like, in whatever form possible, so it doesn't have to be with a weird pendant thing that goes from left to right, and so you're going into a deep sleep. But like everything, like, they use that on. Uh, sound card could be good. Two clubs will use that. Two dimes will use that as well. Clear out the board a little bit, huh? Like they use it sometimes during, um, well, to help like victims of a crime remember more and stuff like that. I know that, well, often, but I think I've seen it in uh, some form of what you may call reality TV. I don't know. I mean, it would. I would assume that it's, well, the whole magic stuff is probably just oak spokes, I can't hardly, let's see what I did there, um, I can hardly believe that swinging a uh, pocket watch in front of someone can make him act like a chicken, right? But the other stuff, like helping you to remind, helping you to forget, man, that could be actually real, right? Same with like... They call it like imprinting an idea into someone, kind of like the, the the movie what's called Inception. Yeah, not by going into dreams and stuff like that, but like planting an idea in someone's head. Like, could you plant the idea in someone to actually kill a man? Now, um. 
started out somewhere where they actually did manage to do that, and by match, I mean they got a person so far that he actually went into where he was with a gun. He didn't know it wasn't loaded and stuff like that, so nothing would have bad happened. But he actually was ready to pull the trigger, even though he didn't know the guy and had the absolutely no reason to kill the dude. I'm wondering, is that real? I want to know. Now. I mean, we've got a number of evidences around showing that we can really freaking easily get manipulated, right? Like, optical illusions, for instance, can make our head go wonky enough. So it wouldn't be that far-fetched to actually believe that kind of stuff, but imagine the possibilities, man. Like, moral issues or ethical things in it as well. See, say someone actually completely made it possible to make someone kill another one without him knowing that he's going to do it or that he does it. And it's a bit more than that because I'm starting to remember more and more stuff about this. Um, so you plan to deceive someone to go kill someone. And he does that. He ends up killing dude, not remember it. Would it be responsible for him to get sent to jail over it? Yes, he committed a crime. No, he doesn't know he did it. And because he doesn't know that he actually did it, how big are the chances that he'll do it again? And by that logic, you kind of have to put everyone in jail, because everyone could be... Well, have one of those seeds in him. So another thing I've... Uh, I don't know from that. They used a chime or a bell or... I don't exactly know what it was. But it wasn't like a signal to put him into a... Trance, shall we say. And everything that got taught to him in that trance, he f immediately forgot when he was pulled out of it. And they actually learned him to shoot in that trance with a real gun, uh, target pack and stuff like that. And... You can actually see a difference. I mean, they let him shoot a gun out of it, and he was just all over the target. Then they put him in that trance again, and, well, he didn't become a top-grade sniper, but his shots were a lot better on the mark. Then they pull him out again, and again, completely oblivious of what he had done. I really want to know if that thing is actually... stuff like that is actually possible, man. It seems like so easy to prove but it's also something that if they don't do it to you you'll have a hard time believing and seeing that I'm already f quite skeptical on what goes on on television um, there's a really really low chance that I'll believe anything said on TV that I don't find immediately believable on my own yet. Especially stuff that's dealing with weird issues like like, 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 what are we talking? Uh, what's the word again? Um, BBF. I have a use for that, but I don't have money for it, so let's go look for a secret room. I completely forgot the word for putting someone in that psych psychosis why, why can't I remember it anymore? now I'm the one going insane full health great pretty fly that's good are you a wizard not so good um oh come on I can't be that stupid uh, ooh, ooh, cracking my brain. Wonder if it's real that someone would be hypnotized. Sure. Uh, this is the last floor. Yeah, which means we'll go back to full health here. Um, yeah. If they don't do it to me, there's a very little chance I'll actually believe it myself. I suppose that's the same for you guys, and that's a good attitude to have. Seeing is believing, but seeing things on television doesn't always mean believing. 
Uh, we were looking for money, we, well, we found our secret room, which means we won't be getting any of that, which means we'll go pick up our black hearts, because they do replace the grey ones. And black ones are just better than grey ones, aren't they not? Um... I mean, I don't know why, but I like reading up on the weird stuff. Believing it is always a different thing. It's also like why I got on that tangent of a bunch of episodes back about um, superstition. Superstition, weird phobias, yeah. Probably because I don't really suffer from any of that. I'm not superstitious. I don't have any uh, out of the blue phobias. Well, actually, I do. It's the. Um, we got one of those pull down ladders on our. for going to the attic in our home, and. Um, we were going to the cathedral, right? Yeah. Well, I would be an idiot not to pick this up. Oh, the damage is a little bit higher now. Picked up the right item. Yeah, I did. Yeah, we got one of those pull-down ladders that you clicks together. It's two separate pieces that need to click together. And I fell off that thing like twice. And now every time I have to go up the ladder, I still get a bit weak in the knees whenever I have to climb up that thing. I know it's a solid construction, but... That's a phobia for you. Not afraid of heights, not afraid of tight spaces, not afraid of white spaces, not afraid of the dark. And that's the thing that actually also interests me. Where does being afraid from white spaces come from? Now, I don't mean that as an insult. Or anything for people that actually have that. Uh, it must be terrible actually having that. But with claustrophobia, you can sort of get it like fear of getting crushed or something. You can't really say that from being like out in the open. I suppose it could be like fear of not being protected or something? I don't know. Um, it's weird. And that's what draws me in to know more about it. If anyone had any extra info on that, be feel free to use the comment section and uh, actually let me know about that. Same thing with uh, what we did in the first part of this thing. Um, if you have any <laughs> thing to say about how messed up we truly are, by all means, go right ahead. Yeah, I know we did a lot of crazy stuff. I mean, um, I've seen some of those uh, what what are they called? Creepy pasta things. Jeez, the sleep deprivation thing. Don't know if that's true, and I. Hopefully, thing they aren't. I suppose that's why they're called creepy pastas in the first place because we don't know if they're real or not. But yeah, thought Bob's brain would uh, save me there. It did not do that. Um. Yeah. Leap experiments and all that jazz. I don't know that. Oh, what the dude, uh, the um, also from a creepy pasta. The um, dude who's got all of his senses removed, like he couldn't see anymore. They um, took away his sense of smell, sense of hearing. Uh, he even they even got rid of his um, sense of touch. I think they did that by cutting up his brain in some weird way, maybe with a drug or something. Eee. 
Yeesh. Man. It's the kind of thing that could keep you awake at night. It's a good thing, like I said, that I'm a true skeptic. I just say, yeah, right. But still, when you're reading it, it's like, whoa, dude, relax. But, um, yeah, I enjoy reading that stuff. Maybe that'll make me a psychopath someday. I don't know. Um, well, people have... Well, I did one of those... Um, what's it called again? Like one of those tests to see what kind of uh, personality. I suppose it's then called a personality test. And turns out I was a bit of an antisocial person. Eh. You might be right. But, does being careful mean you're antisocial? I mean, I know for myself, I'm not going to go up to a stranger and start talking to him immediately. But, if a stranger comes up to me and starts talking to me, I will answer him. Most of the time, unless he's going like, and stuff like that. Then I'll just, um, look him funny in the eye and back away slowly. Do we have any more rooms? Yeah, let's go fill up our Book of Belial. Doing good here and, uh... Um, probably a reason, also the reason why I don't have uh, a special other, as people now like to call that. Eh. Well, that I'm not a big fan of going to, of going clubbing anymore. Hey, it's my fault that I want to hear the guy who I'm speaking with. Besides, that's expensive, man. It's like a lot of money to get in and you don't even have anything to drink yet. And they know the prices of their drinks all too well, too. Well, that and their, uh, the fact that in clubs you... Well, here at least. You often no longer can go outside. Combining that with the fact that smoking in public places is just straight up forbidden here. So, bars, nope. Uh, or pubs, nope, restaurants, hell no! I think you can't even smoke in, um, like, uh, bus stations. Yeah. I don't think it's gonna be that well enforced, but if you, if a cop passes by that's having a bad day, I think he can give you a ticket for that. So yeah, um, I'm a smoker, I'm trying to quit. That's the only reason I actually brought up uh, smoking. Obviously, I'm a smoker, otherwise I wouldn't care about that. But, um... Yeah, so you can't smoke in clubs either. Um, unless they have one of those segregated sections and then it's usually packed with them over there. And while I do still sort of enjoy the taste of a good cigarette, um... I don't enjoy the smell of 50 of them at once. Got a heart from... Bandage? Did we get the bandage on this run? So that's why I don't go clubbing anymore. I still go to bars and stuff like that, but that's just amongst friends. That's cool too, you don't have to yell to anyone, and you know, just all laid back. Have a drink, have a beer. Cocktail every now and then. Anyway, I might be one of the few people that see things that way. Eh. So be it. If that makes me antisocial, then uh, count me in.
I think that's the mitre that's actually dropping all of those spirit arts. Well appreciated. I already opened the door first, but I want to have a peek in that library. If I'm not going to use Book of Belial until the boss, I might as well see if I can get another one out of there, right? And I use the Sun card. Yep, that's going to be a consistent problem. I'll keep like six keys, I think. I guess I'll keep a few more on that Halo of Flies right before we go into a Bullet Hell kind of boss. Ain't going to hurt. Well, Sun Card was only useful to actually find our boss quicker to, to actually find our boss quicker, so it's not that big of a deal that we actually lost to that. Uh boy. Probably gonna need a drink after this one. And by this one, I mean the entire run. I'm not gonna quit halfway of a run. Halo Flies is doing good work. I actually have three because we picked up a pretty fly somewhere along the way, I suppose. See, we got all this... All these damage ups and our damage is still pretty darn terrible. We've gotten... Pact, Abaddon... Still not uh, knocking it out of the park. I think we also got Cat and Nine Tails, although that could have been from a previous run. Because I wasn't really paying too much attention to what's actually going on on screen, more about what was coming out of my mouth. Which hopefully for once was more interesting for you as well. Than what was actually going on on screen. Oh, man. And that's gonna be it. Although it depends on what this does. We roll enemies. Yeah. Didn't think that was gonna do too much for us. I might go pick up Proptosis when we're well, this thing when we're done. I might. I might. I'm not saying that I will. I'm just saying that I might. And see if I can just tank the bejesus out of our final boss. Uh, well, the extra health never hurt anyone. You did the full health, though sometimes it's just completely un necessary. Right. It's one that doesn't shoot at us. I think. He's not shooting at us, so he's probably right. No, he's the normal one. Just did decide. Not to waste his bullets on me. That's his problem. You again. Had a little tooth fly out there. Hmm. 
Hit him in Bob's brain, thought I would have killed him. Guess not. Uh, I think we want the tarot card, right? If we don't have a tarot card, we can use a tarot card. A devil card or... Empress... An emperor card would be good too. Just with the one we were waiting for to kill last. Convenient. We got a tarot card. Well, we could use that, I think. I suppose. Ooh, three of you. This might actually become dangerous. That would be a shame if the run would end in a loss, though. Wow, Bob's brain really starting to be a dick now. Jeez. Might reconsider that proptosis then. See, if it lands, it does a good amount of damage, but it seems like it's doing more damage to me lately than uh, to our enemies. Hmm. Going through a bunch of dead ends again isn't... Uh gonna help anyone either. Oh well. The fact that we see the sights coming helps. Alright, now we can take care of you carefully. Oh, we're not even done after this one. Jeez, they just keep stacking on the loop. That wasn't even... what? Could actually just lose. Okay, kill the one that can still jump. He's being annoying. You know, we can slow down a bit. Watch them slide to us at a gigantic speed for an unbeknownst reason. Boss will be straight after this one. I hope the foot hits something. Can't really tell. No, I got hit again. Yep, I think we actually might end up losing this one. We're not getting any extra health. And we are getting hit quite a bunch. It's possible that I can beat Blue Baby without getting it more than three times, but without getting it more than two times, to be completely honest to you. But we're not even sure where he is yet. The health is just. Uh, now we have to do an extra room because I used up Book of Belial. Alrighty. Could try to find a second secret room. Got 18 bombs, but I might want to use those on the boss fight as well. Hum, 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 hum. Choices, choices, choices. Well, I'll definitely go to run raw room just to get Book of Belial ready. Go 
Could be there. That is there. Alright, that shortens the trip a little bit. We haven't had a trinket for this entire run. Go figure. Alright, do one more room. Let's go for a small one. Ah, oh, crap. Well, I immediately regret being here. Let's just get that out there. Alright, you can get hit by a blue baby once. Well, we did a good thing here anyway. It's been a good run. Everything we could still get now is just bonus. I'm not too mad. We, we did good, kid. We did good. I'm saying it like it already ended. Because that's how you build suspense! I suppose. In some weird fashion. Don't know. Keep it cool, lads. Let's keep it cool. Bob's rain almost messed it up again. Well, he's not gonna teleport on my face. And he doesn't have an attack that'll get you hit randomly. We might actually be okay here. Boom, taken care of by Bob's brain. Well, that ends our ending up with a brain shot while talking about our own brain. What a wonderful ending to a decent episode. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll bring us in on the series. If you should support by commenting, liking, and or subbing. If you have anything to say about what was said here in this episode, feel free to use the comment section below. Go into mad discussions and yell at people who don't agree with you. I'll be seeing you guys on the next episode. Bye, everyone.